In this video, we're going to go ahead and analyze our Minecraft server logs using a concept known as audit logging and log forwarding so that we can then alert when people log into our Minecraft server or our whitelist is modified. This is part four of a series of videos that I am calling Running Minecraft in Production, where the goal of this series is to one, help you run Minecraft in a more predictable manner, but two, help introduce you to some of the concepts and applications or tools that we use within the software development, cybersecurity, and information technology industries. Picking up from last video, where we did metrics gathering, we scraped the metrics for our Minecraft server, and then we visualized those, and then we alerted upon them when certain events happened. Now we're going to uh, ship the logs from Minecraft over to uh, something called Loki, and then we're going to use Grafana again to visualize the log data, and we're going to alert on that log data. So to do this, we're going to be using something called the Promtail Loki Grafana Triple Combo Wombo. So Promtail is going to run as our log shipper. It's going to collect the logs from the Minecraft server, and it's going to ship them to a application called Loki for analysis. Loki is a log aggregation system. So once Loki receives the logs, it will take them, store them, and then allow us to connect Loki to Grafana as a data source. So then we can manipulate the log data within Loki and begin querying it in a way that matters to us. So with all of our other containers still running from the previous videos, the Minecraft server, Grafana, and Prometheus, we're gonna go up here and we're gonna search on Docker Desktop for the Promtail image. And we're looking for Grafana Promtail. So we're gonna be using this Grafana Promtail container image and because we are defining um, more configurations than Docker Desktop will allow us to by simply hitting run here, um, we're gonna actually go ahead and go into our Docker Compose file and we're gonna add the Grafana Promptail service that way. So I'm actually gonna copy the Grafana section here in my Docker Compose file and I'm gonna paste it, oh, and I will paste it below Grafana and we're gonna change the service to be Promptail and we're going to pull this image, Grafana Promtail. So Grafana slash Promtail. And we actually don't need any ports for this. Now we do need a volume. And this is the volume on our local host where our Minecraft logs exist. And Promtail will read the logs from this location and mount it to its var log directory within the container. So on my local system, I put my Minecraft data in the F drive MC data. And in there, I should have a logs folder. And this is the path MC data logs that I will use in my Docker compose file. So under Promptail, on my local system, F MC data logs, mount that within the container to var slash logs. And then we'll keep it in the same Minecraft network as the rest of our applications, uh, but we will give it an alias of Promtail. We'll go ahead and run Docker Compose up. Oh, I had an error in there, a spelling error. Okay, yep. We'll go ahead and run Docker Compose up. And Promtail is starting. So Promtail is up and it's looking for Loki. We can see that. And then for those of you using the Docker CLI, this would be the equivalent Docker CLI command, docker run dash D, the name, the network, the network alias, the volume, and the image to pull. So now that Promptail is running, we're going to get Loki running. Um, so if you come up here to the search bar in Docker Desktop and you search Loki, we want the Grafana Loki container. Again, we're not going to hit run because we need to pass additional configuration options that we just cannot do by doing this in Docker Desktop. So we're going to come to our Docker Compose file. And we're going to copy the Grafana service again, the same way we did for Promptail. And we're going to add that to our Docker Compose file. And we're going to change the name of the service to Loki. And we're going to change the image from Grafana Grafana to Grafana Loki. And the port is going to be 3100. And we're actually not going to attach a volume to Loki at all. And we're going to change the alias to Loki. 
And now we're going to run our Docker Compose up. And we will see our Loki container start. So once Loki and Promptail have both been started, uh, Promptail should now be shipping logs off to Loki. So the next step in our journey is to actually connect the Loki data source to our Grafana. So we'll go to Connections, Data Sources, and we're going to add a new one. And we're going to add Loki. And we're just going to do HTTP and then the network alias for Loki that we created, which should be Loki, port 3100. And we're going to save and test. Now I'm getting data source uh, connected, uh, but no labels were received. Verify Loki and Promptail are correctly configured. So this means that I've successfully connected Loki to Grafana, but there is some issue between Loki and Promptail. So let's figure that out real quick. Let's see here. Uh, everything should be. Oh, you know what it is? I'm sending Promptail. Uh, I'm sending my logs to slash var slash logs, which is actually not where we want to do that. Uh, we want to do slash var slash log for Promptail. So we'll do a Docker Compose up again. And then now, if we run our tests, they should be configured. Yep. Okay. So that was the issue. Uh, so save and test. All right. So now our Loki data source is configured so if we go to data sources now we've got two loki and a prometheus all right so that's all we have to do container wise everything is running up and connected so now all we have to do is start visualizing our logs uh, that are being sent to loki with grafana so over here on the left we'll go to dashboards and in our minecraft folder here uh, we're going to go to that folder and we're going to hit new on the right side and we're going to hit uh, new dashboard and we're actually creating our own here. We're not importing one this time And we're gonna hit add visualization here and we're gonna choose Loki as the data source On the top right here, you'll see a drop down um, and it, you have different visualizations We can choose from and we're gonna change this to logs and we're gonna give this panel a title and We're gonna we're gonna monitor our logs in case somebody gets added to the whitelist added to whitelist so anytime a player gets whitelisted uh, we want to get a notification so down here uh, is where we will build our query for our logs uh, so we want to go ahead and select the label so we're going to collect we're going to select file name and we're going to examine our latest dot log file so our late every minecraft server has a log file called latest.log and that's what we're going to look at and we're going to be looking for line contains and we're simply just going to look for our con colon added so when this string appears in our logs that wasn't there before we will get a notification that a user has been added to the whitelist so i'm going to go into my minecraft container here real quick uh, within the terminal tab i'm just going to type rcon cli and we're simply going to type whitelist add Bob. So we've added Bob to the whitelist. So now back over here on Grafana, right? If I run the query, now I see that the log message from my Minecraft logs, Archon added Bob to whitelist has appeared. So I'm successfully querying when a user is added to the whitelist. So we're going to go ahead and take what we've just built, our query, and on the top right here, we're actually going to hit save and we're going to name our dashboard and we're just going to call it MC logging because we're going to add uh, another panel to the same dashboard and we'll put it in the Minecraft folder and we'll save. So now this is my MC logging dashboard and I've got one panel added to whitelist. So now if I go back to minecraft and i say whitelist add jeff jeff has been added to the whitelist we will come back here and you can see it didn't auto populate here and that's because the dashboard is uh not like instantaneously refreshing but if i just go ahead and on the right here uh click this drop down here and then change this to five seconds uh, within the next five seconds, I'll see my new message here, right? And there, there goes Jeff. And 
optionally, you could also just hit this refresh dashboard button here. And that's just a visual thing for the dashboard. So now we're going to add a second panel and this one is going to be for uh, displaying log messages when a user logs into our Minecraft server. So over here on the right under add, we're going to add a visualization. And again, we're going to change this to a type of logs. Um, if your data source says Prometheus, we have to change that to Loki. Uh, for label filters, again, we're going to choose file name and we're going to choose latest.log. And for the text to find, we're going to say joined the game. So whenever this specific string appears in our log file, then we will be alerted and that will show up here on the panel. And then we want to give this a panel title. Um, so user login. And then we'll just go ahead and hit save. And it's asking you why you're changing your dashboard added a new panel. And we'll hit save. We'll hit apply. And now you can see that I have two panels here, one for whitelisting and one for user login. So let's test the login. Let me go ahead and log into my Minecraft server. So I'm logging in. So uh, here, nope, yep, I see player, Penguino, Bambino, UUID. Um, so I should see a login message in a second when I actually get in. No. So I've logged in. Um, you can see me dying right now to the cold. And then if we go back to Grafana, expecting to see the message that someone has joined the game, we do. We see that I have joined the game. So now, similar to the way we set up an alert rule for our other dashboard, uh, when our Minecraft server went up and down, right? Uh, we're going to go ahead and set up alert rules for when somebody logs in or is whitelisted, right? Because people should only get whitelisted if we as the admin know or do it ourselves. So if it happens without our consent, we want to know about it. So under alerting, alert rules, to get started creating our alert rule for when a particular log message comes across, we'll go to the alerting section alert rules and we'll click create new rule we'll give this rule a name user added to whitelist and it's going to be a grafana managed alert and for the a block here under data source we'll pick loki for label file name equals var log latest we're looking for a line that contains our con added so we can be alerted when a user is added to a whitelist we're going to add an extra operation here. It'll be a range function and that will be rate. And we'll set that to one minute. For the B block here, we're going to change this from reduce to a classic condition. When the average of A is above 0, 0.0. And then we're going to go ahead and delete C. Now if we hit preview, uh, nothing happens. That's normal. Choose a folder to put this in. I have a logs folder. I'll put that in there. And an evaluation group. I'll again create one by typing the name and then hitting add new. And our evaluation interval, I'll set to one minute, meaning we're going to evaluate um, this query. We're going to run this query every minute. And then how long do I want it to pen for? Because this is, uh, I want to get a message as soon as the error or the message comes across my logs, I don't want to pend at all. Um, I just want to immediately be notified. And then we can go ahead and hit save rule. So I've got my rule, it's in a normal state. Um, and then let's go ahead and go to contact points and we're gonna add a new contact point. Oh, But before I do that, I want to go ahead and grab my Discord web link for my contact point from the last video. So I'm just gonna go into one of these existing contact points I have and copy the webhook URL because it's going to the same server in the same channel. Add new contact point. We're gonna say whitelist modified as the name. It'll be a discord type. I'll paste that webhook URL. And then the title whitelist modified. The whitelist has been modified. No. A user has been added to the whitelist. And then we'll hit save contact. 
and then we'll make a notification policy to tie the contact point to our alert rule. Real quick, I need the name of my alert rule here. So alert name equals user add to whitelist. Go to notification policies, hit new nested policy, alert name is the label equal to the name of the alert. It'll go to the whitelist modified contact point and I will save policy. So now I'm gonna go into my Minecraft real quick and I'm gonna type whitelist add Sarah eight. And it says the next evaluation is within the few seconds. So in a few seconds, I should see this go from normal to firing. So the alert is firing. So now if I go and watch Discord, uh, I should get an alert here within a few seconds that a user has been added to the whitelist. And there we go, it came through. So now we're gonna add a second alert rule for when a user logs in. So I'm gonna go again to alerting, alert rules, and I'm gonna create an alert rule. And we're gonna call this user login for the alert rule name. And again, we're gonna choose Loki for the data source. The filter will be file name equals var log latest. And we're looking for a joined the game. So anytime that comes across our logs, we will get a notification. And again, operations ranged rate one minute. We'll change reduce to classic condition. Average of A is above 0, 0.0 and delete C. Put it in our logs folder, part of the logs evaluation group. And again, zero second pending time, and we will go and save our rule. So now we've got two alert rules for monitoring our logs. So let's go ahead and create a contact point. And again, I'm gonna grab a Discord webhook link, create a new contact point, user login event, type Discord, the URL, the title, someone has logged into Minecraft. Friend joined, and we're gonna save that contact point. And then again, we have to make a new nested policy, alert name equals, and then user login is what we called that alert, user login event for the contact point and save policy. So let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and log into my Minecraft server real quick. So I just logged in. So let's go check Grafana and we can see that the alert is firing. So let's check discord now. And I should get a message here in a few seconds that a user has logged in. There we go. Someone has logged into Minecraft. Now you'll notice that all of these events have uh, send twice, right? So we've got this kind of, even on Minecraft down here, we've got this red Minecraft is down and then this green Minecraft is down. And then it kind of did the same for uh, whitelist modified, red and green. And that is it. That is normal expected operation. However, we don't always want, right? In our case, we're alerting that the whitelist has been modified. I only wanna get one notification, the red one that has been modified. I don't need a status saying the whitelist is not being modified anymore, right? So um, you'll see it'll happen here too. Uh, within, within the next few minutes, I'm probably gonna end up getting this same alert, but it'll be green because the status has changed to uh, nobody has logged in. So in our contact points, right? So like for the whitelist modified, we'll go ahead and edit that. And under notification settings, we can actually hit disable resolved message. Uh, and this will prevent that from happening. So I'm gonna do that with both my whitelist modified and user logged in events. Quick recap of what we did in this video. We deployed a prompt tail container to collect the logs from our Minecraft server, shipped those over to a Loki container, which we configured. And then we configured the Loki data source within Grafana. We created a dashboard to display 
logs when a user is whitelisted in our Minecraft server and when a user logs in. And we also set up alerts. So when a user logs in or is whitelisted, we get a Discord notification. And in the next video, we're gonna go over disaster recovery and automated backups.